if you could take a movie of the different shapes that your mind goes through in the course of a day, it would be wilder and more bizarre than the shape-shifting screensavers you see on your computer screen. They can stretch out to fill the whole universe and then shrink down to a little spot. Send an extension out to the east, to the west. Its shapes are more variegated than an amoeba. And go through a wider range of sizes. So when you try to bring the mind to settle down with the breath, just be here with the body in the present moment. It's going to take a fair amount of adjusting, so you can bring things into balance, bring things into alignment, because the mind finds it so easy to shift its shape again, or to get waylaid. You've got three things you're trying to bring together. You've got the mind and the body, which you're feeling from the inside, primarily as the breath, and then a feeling of pleasure. It's the feeling of pleasure that allows these things to stay together with a sense of well-being. But even that can be slippery. You learn how to breathe in a way that feels good in the different parts of the body, and it's all too easy just to go for the pleasure, in which case you've lost part of the, the alignment that you're trying to create between body, feeling, and mind. It feels good. And you can stick with it for a while, but then it begins to blur. Or if your awareness is too small, focus at one spot in the body, and as the breath begins to get more and more subtle, it loses its focus too. So as soon as the breath gets comfortable, think of spreading your awareness to fill the body. Think of the comfort spreading to fill the body. You've got all three things together right here. And other things will come up to pull you away. It's interesting when a John Lee in The Craft of the Heart talks about the different obstacles in concentration. Some of them are your hindrances, but some of them are things like rapture and visions. In other, th in other words, things that you actually will encounter as part of the concentration itself. Or things that are signs that you're settling down. And you have to be careful not to focus on them. As I was saying today, it's like a sign on the side of a road. This is now entering Valley Center. You don't drive on the sign. You keep on the road, but you notice, okay, the sign is there. And the same with other things that may come up as you're trying to bring things into alignment and as they're struggling to get away. With the hindrances, you'll have to learn how to recognize them as hindrances and drop them. With a sense of light that may come up, don't make, the ob don't make that the object of your concentration until you're really well established with the breath. Then you can bring the light into the realm of the breath and spread it as well, once you have it under your control. But if it's just coming and going and you don't, can't really control it, don't have anything to do with it. There are certain things that you just can't touch as you're going into meditation, no matter how attractive they may be. There was an old monk who was a friend of a John Fuggs. He was his doctor the last couple of years of his life. And he had some pretty weird psychic powers. One time he and another monk had made an arrangement with the Davis to go into a cave. They had all kinds of valuable objects in the cave, and the Davis were basically standing guardian over the cave. And they'd gotten permission to get one particular item out of the cave. And as he told to John Fuggs, as they went in, they noticed that there were a lot of other treasures in the cave and a lot of skeletons. People had gone into the cave trying to take something that they didn't have permission for, and so they died. So they had to stay focused on just what they were after, get it out, and then they were safe. And in some ways, meditating is it like that. There are things that will pull you away, and they're sometimes very attractive things. Sense of light, visions you may have. But you can't go for them. You've got to maintain the sense of body, feeling, breath. Keep them together. 
Remember that the breath is your anchor. And we will get more subtle as your concentration improves, which means that you have to be even more careful about staying with it, because it gets easier and easier to lose as it gets subtle. You basically stay with the breath all the way through the fourth jhana, the point where the breath actually gets still. There's still breath energy in the body, but the movement of the in and out breath stops. And only after you can stay there solidly are you ready to move on to the formless states. Up until that point, you've got to have some sense of breath as your anchor. It is possible to go into something formless in the meantime, but it won't be solid. So you've got to get everything ready. Because when you're staying in the formless states, it's simply the perception that keeps you there. And until you can maintain a perception so that it's totally seamless and totally constant, you're not ready. While you're working with the breath, you've got the breath here. When it comes in, when it moves, it reminds you of breath. The breath is here. And so if, there were, if there's a lapse in the perception, then the breath makes up for the, for the gap. Otherwise, you get into the pleasure, you get into anything else that pulls you away. And it may be pleasant for a while, but you've lost your foundation. Because you want a state of mind that's able to observe itself very clearly. And if you can't keep just this much in mind, you're going to start floating around. And when you start floating, it's like boats floating on a, a river or, or on a lake. It's hard to tell which boat is standing still and which boat is moving, because there's no firm re reference point. And the breath gives you a reference point. So you can see the movements of the mind as they happen. And don't be afraid that the, the pleasure will not be able to do its work unless you wallow in it. It will do its work. But you'll be able to keep, keep creating more and more pleasure for the body. Until the body has had enough of the pleasure, you drop that. Prior to that, it may be dealing with rapture, which for different people occurs in different ways. And again, the symptoms of rapture sometimes have to do with this issue of trying to get everything to come together in alignment, in balance. As you may get a sense of the body as being really large or really small, or one part being large and another part being small. In other words, the sensation of the body gets distorted as the energy flow begins to readjust itself. So you've got to hang on to the breath in those cases as well. So the breath gives you your anchor. As the Buddha says, when you're dealing with the four frames of reference, you can do them all as you're dealing with the breath. The act of attending the breath gives rise to a feeling of pleasure, so you've got feeling. And the fact that you're keeping the breath in mind, well, that gives you a mind state of alertness, and then you're being equanimous about what comes up. Okay, That gives you mental, the mental quality you're looking for. So all four frames of reference are right here, but the breath is the anchor to help keep the other, other things drifting from drifting away. And this way you bring things into alignment, you can keep them with alignment as the, the mind shudders and wobbles a bit as it settles down. But as it gets more and more used to being here and realizing, okay, this should be your default mode, not sending out pseudopods in all directions, being centered right here with a sense of well-being and with no felt need to have to think about things. At first you're thinking about the breath, but then you just hold the perception, i.e. the image of the breath, or just the word breath in mind. And that's enough to help keep the anchor or the connection between the body and the mind. But when you get really still, there's a sense of having been satisfied by the rapture, satisfied by the pleasure. The mind can settle down and things do come into equi equilibrium, they come into alignment. They come into balance with a sense of lightness. It's not that you're confining the breath here. It feels natural and expansive. 
the body feels at its ease. And you just learn how to maintain that. Because in maintaining it, then you have that point of reference to see the things you want to see. But just make sure things aren't steady and in alignment. Otherwise, what you see is going to be distorted, just like the different distortions that the mind goes through in its ordinary state. In John Lee's image is looking in a mirror. Some mirrors are convex, some mirrors are concave. They give you very distorted reflections. You want a mirror that's smooth, flat, and bright. And then you can see things for what they are. 